back. Time for us to go behind the headlines. And we are going to take a look at uh, Forbes magazine as well as uh, Fortune Management on CNN have both had recent stories on the legalization of marijuana versus employment rights. And I'm going to take a look at the CNN story on this one. They uh, talk about how uh, Washington and Colorado have both passed marijuana legalization, and that seems straightforward enough. Anyone over 21 can possess an ounce without facing a penalty, right? Well, wrong. Not when it comes to employment and employers. And the question here is, how do you maintain a drug-free workplace, <laughs> alleged drug-free workplace, in a state where workers have the right to use marijuana? And uh, this has taken a look. Uh, the story is basically explaining to people who don't know a lot of the background behind this. And that fact is that just because marijuana has been legalized, whether it be for medical use in 19 states or recreational use in two states, we can be completely discriminated against in employment. They can still P-test us and based on a, a, a metabolite, not hire us. They can P-test us at work randomly and fire us from our jobs. They can outright just not hire us even for having a medical marijuana card based on the presumption that that means we're a drug abuser. So people oftentimes think of employment as a right. They think of how can this be legal? How can it be constitutional? Well, the fact is, in lots of case law, when it comes down to your employment, it's been determined that that is a voluntary contract between you and an employer. And it's not the government forcing you to do anything. So since you choose to be employed, you know, so you can pay rent and eat and stuff, since, since you voluntarily chose to be an employee, employee of this place, you have to follow their rules. And of course, there's the Drug-Free Workplace Act of 1988 and all sorts of other laws that give them great latitude to discriminate against us. Now, the court cases involved in this, the most recent one is the case of Coates versus Dish Network LLC. And this involved Brandon Coates. He's a quadriplegic telephone operator for Dish Network. And he's a registered medical marijuana patient in the state of Colorado. Now, that means not only does he have the medical right to use it, but a constitutional right to possess it, even if he wasn't a quadriplegic. However, he uh, was fired by Dish Network after he failed a positive drug test. And Dish Network saw, cited no other reason other than the drug test. In fact, uh, as they were testifying, they had to admit he did not exhibit any impairment on the job whatsoever or ever had any indication that he was using marijuana on the job. Merely for failing the drug test, he could be fired. And the legality behind that is really shocking when you consider Colorado has a statute called the Lawful Activities Statute, which prohibits employers from firing workers for, quote, engaging in any legal activity off the premises of the employer during non-working hours, end quote. Well, you would think that would be a slam dunk, wouldn't it? It's, con it's a constitutional right and a medical right in the state of Colorado, but wrong. Judge John, or not Judge John Webb, but the judges in this case, two won a decision at the Court of Appeals, said, quote, for an activity to be lawful in Colorado, it must be permitted by and not contrary to both state and federal law. So, once again, they have found a way that even in a state that expressly says, if you're doing something legal off-premises, they can't discriminate against you, ah, except that if that's marijuana, because that's federally legal. All right, so that's the Colorado case. In Michigan, the case that most recently came before that that shocked us all was Casayas versus Walmart. Uh, this was uh, Joseph Casayas, an employee of Walmart. He'd been working for five years. He was an associate of the year. Uh, he suffers from sinus cancer and an inoperable brain tumor. <laughs> so he uh, was fired due to a drug test, and his, he uh, was a medical marijuana patient. He failed the drug test. His employment was terminated. He sued for wrongful discharge claiming that Walmart's application of its drug use policy causes him to violate the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act. And the federal district court found the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act does not regulate private employment and granted the motion to dismiss. The court found that the act merely provides defense to criminal prosecution or adverse actions by the state. And this is another ha uh, the, the little peg they hang their hat on here in these cases is the fact that when you're in a medical marijuana state, you're not legal. 
all you patients out there, I've got my card, I'm legal. No, you're not. You're still in violation of state law. Your state law still has marijuana, in most cases, on the controlled substances list. You're still violating the law. What your card or recommendation gives you is an exemption from arrest and prosecution. It doesn't make you legal. It makes you a criminal they can't bust. And because that's still a criminal act, because it's still not technically legal, in the Michigan case here, it does not protect you from any sort of employment discrimination. Now here in Oregon, we've, or I'm sorry, California, let's go to California next. R Ross v. Raging Wire Telecommunications. Uh, this was Gary Ross, uh, wrongful termination because he's in because of violation of the California Fair Employment and Housing Act. But again, the California Supreme Court ruled against saying that medical marijuana patients cannot state civil causes of action for employment discrimination. So even in California, no protection for your use of medical marijuana. Here in Oregon, two cases, Washburn v. Columbia Forest Products. This was a, a, a man, Robert Washburn, suing Columbia Forest Products uh, that he was a disabled worker and they didn't accommodate his disability under Oregon's Disability Act. Once again, not did not hold, the Supreme Court held that where an individual's symptoms can be mitigated so they're not substantially limited, the person's not disabled. Let me rephrase that for you. In Washburn v. Columbia Forest Products, the disabled guy uses medical marijuana so he can work. And the court says, well, if medical marijuana makes you able to work, then you aren't disabled now, are you? Ha! <laughs> it's actually based on precedent that had to do with eyeglasses, believe it or not. The Emerald Steel case, Emerald Steel versus the uh, Bureau of Labor and Industries, a similar case, allows, uh, you know, the how do the state and federal laws intersect, and again, was held that the card has no basis uh, in, in helping you uh, because it's still illegal federally. Well, that was early. It's not 420 yet. It's not even 320 yet. That's okay. Maybe Libra Mater knows something I don't. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially...